Hello, nerds, and welcome to the Superhero Show Show, the only podcast in podcasting history that covers every single live-action TV show based on comic books, or because there's a dearth of those right now, any of the animated ones we feel like. I am your host of the evening. Welcome to 2024. My name is Mike. With me, as always, is Ryan. Oh, my God. Mike, I was so nervous, so nervous that you were going to introduce Caitlin first because me and Cassie have this thing where she introduces me first or I will have a fucking conniption fit. Oh, I'm aware. I will lay on the ground and I will throw a goddamn tantrum. I swear to God. Uh, It's it's unlike any tantrum you've ever seen from a grown-ass man. You looked at Caitlin... And, and Caitlin's here, by the way. <laughs> uh, but like, I thought that you were going to introduce her, and I was going to bite my tongue off. What I don't get is, so Cassie's dead. Uh, she died in a New Year's accident. The ball fell right on her head. Damn balls. Damn balls. Falling right on heads, killing people. Uh, welcome back, Caitlin. Thank you so much. Uh, sorry, I was going to introduce you, <laughs> yeah. but Ryan did it in his... It's okay. Said- I, but, uh, to be honest, Mike, can I, can I stop you right there? Yeah. I totally thought you were going to introduce me first, and now I feel super like, you know... Like, I saw welcomed. eye contact. You looked scared. Yep. You've been welcome back. I always How's look scared. The kid, don't care. Uh, <laughs> we're all very happy for you, or whatever. What are you talking? What kid? Uh, what kid? What, 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 why were you gone for three months? Oh, because I had a massive shit, and it ended up being a child. <laughs> Exhaustion. That's yep. what the celebrities say. Uh, Ryan, we had a pre like okay, Cassie can't make it. Who's gonna host? And you're like, not me. I don't want to host. But then you just did all the things a host is. You introduced one of the panelists. Why don't you just fucking host, man? Well, I don't want to write the. Uh little paragraph where you have to introduce the show oh, the, man. like the what if episode that we're doing tonight wait Oof. have you guys been writing paragraphs come wow. on we know that you're not doing that off your dome i Mike. just right off the top of the nog wow okay if that's the case then um then tonight i want you to freestyle the intro for the nebula episode of the first episode okay. of what if i can i will do that okay for you and that again Stealing the host job. That is what we're talking about tonight wow. just <laughs> he's doing it all he's doing it all marvel dropped all of what ifs nine days in a row but and we'd love to talk, Mike. Shut the fuck okay, please, up, dude. It. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> we would love to do all nine episodes. We would. all of them. But there's no content. There's no mm-hmm. tent out there for us. So we have to like slow it down yeah, and pace slow it. Slow drip. Right. Ryan, this yeah. is for the people, right? Because we need to slow it down for them. Right. Marvel was like, we're gonna throw all of this you at once. Nah, nah, nah. nah we're gonna nah, nah. we're gonna break that down for you guys. <laughs> And as we've said for the last four shows, and we'll say again, we are all preparing for the shows we actually care about. So we are housing films of 2023, albums of 2023, comedies of 2023, and dramas of 2023. So if you look at your iPod, mm-hmm. and it, 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 this show is like 20 minutes, don't yeah. be like, don't be sad about the minutes you didn't hey. get. Be stoked about the minutes you did. You're, and you're gonna. And fans, I love you, but please, you don't. The few of you who've somehow gotten my number. You don't have to text me every time there's a short show telling me before you've even finished the episode that you think I fucked up and the whole one didn't go out. I love you. It means so much that you care. We don't need that. I swear it's on purpose. Again, he he said we love you. And just remember that that sounded like kind of like mean, but we love you. Yeah, what I learned from my parents, you say I love you and then you can say the meanest (laughs) foul shit that you want after that. And then if you cry after, your kid will feel bad. If you cry after, your kid will feel bad. Yeah. So your parents would say, yeah, I love you. Your parents you. say, I love you, then say foul shit, and then they cry. Ah, yes. And then your kid will be like, I guess I did that. <laughs> yep. That's all. The perfect parent move is if your kid looks like they're about to cry, fucking pull a nose hair out, start crying. <laughs> your kid Me will- first. I can cry first. <laughs> Who can cry the hardest? It's always him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what if, Nebula, <laughs> we're back after the quickest of breaks? Before we dive into what if, Caitlin, can you drop a beat while I freestyle this intro? That's not a beat. <laughs> I, I was going to say, you can just say no. <laughs> no. Said, can you? No, I cannot. Okay, thank you. Ryan, do you want to give it a whirl? No. No, no. No, 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 no. No. All right. No. I was going to do it, no. but I guess I'll, I'll do it like in a more closer to normal way. No, no. In the first episode of the second season of What If, we dive right into the multiverse's malarkey, seeing what would have happened if Nebula joined the Nova Corps. Coward. To get there, Ronan the Accuser killed Thanos, uh, Gamora, and the Black Order, and Nova Prime saw some good in the wayward Nebula. When Ronan tried to conquer Xandar, Nova Prime put a unbreakable shield around the planet that won't come down for 50 years. Only five years in, Xandar is a cyberpunk city of grit and crime, and Nova Nebula finds Yondu's corpse. Her investigation leads to betrayal on a planetary level, 
breaking Yon Rag out of prison in a gathering of guardians comprised of Groot, Korg, Meek, and Howard the Duck. Taste buds ask you this Do we find the ode to Blade Runner exactly what What If is all about? Or let's say, to be kind, on the lazier side of an adaptation. I feel like this was um, this was the first What If back of season two, right? Yes. I feel like this wasn't the strongest one we should have done. Maybe we put something else out there instead of this. We do have to assume that they're all done before they launch. Yep. It's not like this was the first one turned in. Some of these were done last season. Right. And yeah. they're like, hold it. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, they shouldn't probably have put this one first. This is probably like more of a filler, I feel like. Do you feel the same thing, or do you think it was strong enough to be the first one? It's a, Okay, both of you guys are asking good questions. Let me answer them both at the same time with a little freestyle Control rap. Quest. <gasps> yes. Um, okay, so I here's what I will say. Mike first, I will say that I have been watching Blade Runner odes and homages my entire life, I mm-hmm. feel like. So it's not a shock or surprise. Um, this one being so blatant, um, it's like, okay, get it out of your system. Let's never have one again. Right. What I don't want is this to – for every episode of this season to go this extreme. To be a different movie. Right. Mm-hmm. Like that's, last season didn't do that. I know. I don't remember any that were this crazy. But you got to – everyone, you got to do Blade Runner, right? You just got to do Blade Runner. Yeah. <laughs> you got to get it out of your system. And then this one is crazy because the robot is definitely the detective. Ooh. Yeah, I don't no think there mystery. was any mystery there. Um, and then as far as the strength, I was about halfway through this episode, I was thinking, you know, this is not revolutionary as far as like the strength of this story or this episode, but I'm digging the animation, mm-hmm. right? And Way more than last season. Sure. And I'm realizing that is this weird thing at this, what we're looking at now is like the bottom of the barrel for the MCU, right? Mm-hmm. Like this might be the low point that we've ever been at. Is this the only time we're going to get stakes, is in this stakeless show. Right. So even though the stakes don't matter, is this the only time they're going to matter? And Because anything can happen because it's a alt-universe. Right. Mm-hmm. And th- so even though what happens at the end doesn't affect anything, is this the only time anything is going to matter? And that was this weird sort of, uh, I don't know, dichotomy there. Yeah. But then by the end, what I was watching was just the same old twist, the same old battle, the same old... Like MacGuffins, the same old story that we get every single time. What I want from this show, and I know this is not a critic's job, is to say here, uh, write this instead. Yeah, what I like here's what I wanted, and you didn't give it to me, is Nebula had this job. All of her people died, right, and so her career took a different course, and now she is uh, at home going to grocery stores mm. and sitting in recliners, mm-hmm. and that's something that we'll never get a movie about. Yeah. Right. So this is the opportunity to give us that. Mm-hmm. Instead, we got the same Like, Nebula's MCU not a different story. Nebula, yeah. despite her father and sister dying. Right. She's still like, and now I talk like this, and I'm a little deadpan. But tell yeah. a different type of story. Right. This was still the exact same type of story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Caitlin, uh, how how into cyberpunk in general and Blade Runner specifically are you? I watched the newest uh, cool. Blade Runner. I watched a little bit of the old one. Um, I know Ryan Gosling was the first one. Everything else, cannot remember. Yeah. Cannot remember it because it was just like... So so I'll say they, they're ripping off the vibes, not the plot here. Oh, yeah, which I can totally see the vibes. I That's my favorite part. Probably like, it looked gorgeous. There There's the one scene where Nebula and Yonrag are... Like fireman pulling down, uh, like elevator shaft, elevator or, shaft, yeah, but it, the, the like colors that. are going crazy. Uh, the optical illusion. What, what's that prism? I forgot the word prism. Like a mm-hmm. prismatic pole. Uh, and I was like, fuck yeah, this looks gorgeous. Ignoring all like the cliched noir. They. It really feels like they were like, oh, we're doing a like Blade Runner noir. We don't even have to comment on the. Nobody expects what if to comment on the genre, mm-hmm. but they're like, we're not even a twist. We're gonna say, what are the line? All the detectives' criminal friends say, Howard the Duck says that line word for word. Mm-hmm. Now. Right. We don't even think about it. Howard the Duck, he was in last season, and then he's here again. Were you surprised to see him in this season? No, because so Howard the Duck is for some, a creator favorite for some reason. I don't hate him, but he's fine. Yeah. But people love him. <laughs> well, have you ever uh, read a comic book? N- yes. <laughs> Sorry, I'll, I'll be more specific. Oh, about <laughs> Howard. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, yeah, I was like, why are we fighting now? I thought we were on the same side. I'll be more specific. Uh, have you ever read a Howard the Duck comic book? I think a long time ago. I don't know if I ever have, but like the reputation is that uh, he's very satirical. He's very like... He's uh, Deadpool for smart people? Sort of, yeah. Middle <laughs> finger at society. Uh, there's nothing about this right. that is Howard the Duck. 
you guys know what this is, right? This is our buddy Seth Green's here. Let's get him. This is we cannot afford Bradley Cooper. <gasps> right. This is there is like this is just Rocket Raccoon. Yeah, that mm. makes sense. We I didn't need even our, think about our it little pet angle. friend. Right. We need a little, little pet, pet friend, friend to like say funny things. <laughs> yeah. Look, did, can you guys believe that came out of a duck's mouth? A duck's mouth. <laughs> Normally. They say such pleasant things. I'm hoping that it takes so long. Like we get Bradley Cooper's too expensive. I want Howard the Duck to be too expensive because then we go to our next furry friend, which is Squirrel Girl. And I'm hoping we'll get there. Not even Squirrel Girl. What's her fucking squirrel Tippy sidekick? Toe. Tippy Toe. Which it just squeaks and squirrels. But I've uh, Squirrel Girl does not shave. She definitely has a furry friend. I was thinking. <laughs> oh, that's a Merkin, Ryan. Speaking about this, though, I should we start? Because they've got Taika to mm-hmm. be in this episode yeah. yep. and Jude Law. Yeah, mm-hmm. but should the three of us start working, like pick an MCU character, and start working on an impression? Right. So when they just get too famous, yeah. they call us to do it. Like, who do you guys think you can do? Wow. Wow. Okay. okay so we're both going for Mobius. Mobius. <laughs> we both gunned for it. <laughs> so dibs on Mobius for you two. Damn. Because what you guys did was harmonize. Yeah. Uh-huh. So and then we oh, actually wow. sounded like him. <laughs> All right. So who do you want then? Oh well. I mean, I think I think that's obvious that I would be Thor. <laughs> <laughs> you guys heard that, right? Yeah. Oh, completely. <laughs> it does sound like Liam doing Chris, <laughs> but not the worst thing, I guess. So if Thor gets hit in the head really hard with a hammer, yeah, I can be that character from you, then on. You out. could be that. You could be the Liam Chris instead of it, you know. At least it's not the Luke Chris, which is you know the third Hemsworth. That's no, we don't talk about that one. <laughs> the bonus Jonas Hemsworth. The bonus Jonas Hemsworth. <laughs> I think I'm gonna gun specifically. For Ross Marquand's Red Skull. That's wow. the impression I'm going to try to get. You mean your buddy, Mike? My buddy. He took a picture of the shoes I'm wearing right now because he liked them so much. Because he was like, I need to remember those to buy those. True story, folks. Do, okay, well, should we talk about what if more? Um, <laughs> I, um, there's a couple things. <coughs> we sort of hit on this with the, the whole Howard the Duck thing. But um, when the lottery machine or the slot machine, I'm sorry, uh, drops over and... Uh, Howard the Duck says, oh, that's not supposed to happen. Right. It's not supposed to pay out. Or when um, Nebula and Yon Rag. Rog. Yes, not Yondu, who is dead. Yon Rog, two, who is Jude. Two Yons in this episode, although when I was watching it, more Yons than that. Oh! Uh, <laughs> um, Got me. <laughs> uh, like, Nebula's talking to him, and he shushes her, and she's like, oh, we don't need to be quiet. And he's like, no, I was just shushing you. The In this what-if sort of world, yeah. all of the... Uh, they're right behind me, aren't they? Yes. Those jokes can go away. Yeah. If they're going to be this fucking tepid and old, we don't need them. Because fucking Rick Casablanca didn't say they have wings now, <laughs> so we don't need to do that here. But lean, that would be, if you're going to go tonally, Blade Runner, no matter the variation, either the first one with Ryan Gosling or the reboot with Harrison Ford, neither of the Blade Runners uh, are funny in the fucking slightest. Yeah. No. So if you're going to do it, make make... Surprises by being a hard boiling gritty. You already have Rodney King with Nebula as Rodney. Yes. Car- that surprised the shit out of there me. There was not five or three policemen. It was four policemen beating Nebula Ooh. down. That was a specific reference. S- and Brendan Fraser jumped out the back and just started chanting Rodney King. Let us into that radio Shh. station. Uh, so if you're going to do that, just that would be so shocking. No jokes. This is a hard cartoon to watch. And there's, there's, cool. no, there's no point in Blade Runner where Harrison Ford, um, like, has a guy with a big sword whipping it around, and then he just watches him and shoots him with a laser. So you right. don't have to do that in every movie. You don't have to have that type of comedy in every sure. movie. Don't put it in every type of what if. Just like, oh, we don't need to actually think about what we're doing with the genre. It feels like first joke you think of, just put that in because writing a line is hard. Mm-hmm. Nothing about this episode felt hard as a screenwriter. And I know, guys, Seth Green is there, <laughs> and you want to utilize that comedic talent. He's right there. Let him go. You're forgetting about the pathos he can also show, as he showed in Can't Hardly Wait, as little Kenny. <sighs> well, Caitlin, that does mark yep. 1,000 episodes of Shush, superhero show show in a row, where Micah brings up Can't Hardly Wait. Wow. The balloons are coming down. <laughs> Yay! I can stop doing it. I can stop pretending I love that movie. Caitlin, I'm so always so baffled by the movies that you have and have not seen. Have you seen or heard of the movie Can't Hardly Wait? I have never heard of that movie. I've <laughs> never heard of it. I didn't know if it was a movie, a show, a series. Big in the Gravano household. Is it Apple up. TV? 
It's so much older it than Apple TV. It sounds okay. Never I've mind. It, it's older it. than the see-through Apple computers. Wow. 1998. Can't hardly I've wait. seen it one time, but because I've been friends with Mike so long, I have seen it 1,000 times. <laughs> I know it features quarterback superstar Mike Decker. Is Mike that, Dexter is God. Mike Dexter, Mike I'm Dexter's sorry. Mike Dexter's a role model. Wow. The only Dexter I know has a lab. So. Actually, I know two Dexters with a lab. Well. One's a blood lab. One's a blood lab. Ooh, okay. okay. Um, The whole twist, quote unquote, at the end, Glenn Close, Nova Prime, and all the cops are actually evil. They want Ronan to conquer the world. But. Nebula stops them with her new guardians and is like, I'm, and I'm sorry, Mike, real quick, because I, I I did get a little confused. Yeah. Is it just better to be higher up on the fascist chain than fight for what's good? I think so, I guess so. And she's like, well, look at the planet. Also, our planet doesn't have interplanetary uh, space travel. And we're no, we're not OK, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know why five years of just being a single planet killed them this much. Uh, Follow up question. Mike, if I just called dibs right now, I'm being called Ryan Prime. Do all of the <laughs> Ryans have to deal with that? In my life, most Ryans are very annoyed that you're Ryan Prime. <laughs> um, But so she betrays it's Glenn Close, who, again, is like the president of the world is like betraying the world. But she needed to do this convoluted reveal to get the codes and who's in charge and Nebula's like I'm gonna turn you in fucking to who all the cops and yeah. Nova Prime are the bad guys who's getting turned into where I would just drive forever <laughs> Thelma and Louise style <laughs> just into the fucking sun alright moments of the week Caitlin uh, the moment Rowan was smashed I'm um, sorry who Ronan 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 yeah Ronan it sounded like you said Rowan Rowan weird that's, that's a, a stupid name that's yeah. a what crazy name, name? whoa okay. wild name settle down buddy um, where he just gets smashed um, through like it looks like almost like closing like electric doors I just thought Glenn of like closing. you know Walmart the electric doors and just like <laughs> smash it was fun for me yeah. I like that He's just a shit upon villain and from his own movie and all the rememberings. He just sucks. He's he a little just, twerp. It was so fun how he had such a little, little piece of this. Like, we didn't even mm. see why he's bad. Like, obviously, we know who he is. He's but, like, bad. We, we just get to see him, like, smashed. Smashed. So I liked him smashed. Do you guys remember who played him? Lee Pace. Lee Pace. Wow. Biggest waste. Lee Pace. Lee, of Lee Pace. Waste. Ryan, what's your moment of the week? Uh, my, my, my. My moment of the week is when uh, Nebula puts Yon Rog okay. in the front seat, the passenger seat of her flying car, the same seat that Gigolo Joe sits in in the movie AI. That is just Jude Law. <laughs> That's what, I saw you go <gasps> and yeah. scribble something down, and it was fucking that. <laughs> Jude, <laughs> That's just where robot Jude Laws go to sit when they fly. And this, even though. Canonically, Jan Rog is not a robot. He's robot Jude Law yeah. here. And uh, you know he was trying to jiggle low. Was question. Was I supposed to know who he was? He was in the Captain Marvel movie, one of your favorite movies of all Ooh, time. Yeah, oh. We all remember the, the one cap- I definitely the watched. Captain Marvel. <laughs> he was the bad guy who also was shut down pretty easily because he was like they did they tried to go for an Indiana Jones thing where he's like trying to give a bad guy speech and she just shoots him. Wow. Uh, which I think works very well. Uh, 30 years ago. And also, if it's not your big bad fight, mm-hmm. I think at that point it's what wasted. And you're like, why no was wonder he ever I can't a remember this movie. And that's also where Glenn Close is from? That's No, Glenn Close is from Nova Corps, one of the Guardians, Guardians, Guardians movies. Yeah. Wait, who is. Oh, uh, Annette Benning is in Captain and, Marvel. Yeah. Annette Benning is They're Captain Marvel. Just the meshing. Supreme Intelligence. And then Jodie Foster was in the Marvel movie Nell. What? Yeah. Zaya the Diva. Tay in the Wind. The Tay in the Wind was Groot. <laughs> I'm lost. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you don't. don't hey, you. A few miles off your fastball. It's been a minute. You, you're like <laughs> forgot to just tune out Mike and Ryan. Uh, what if uh, is all on Disney Plus right now? You could go and binge it or watch it. A couple episodes. We'll be doing two episodes a week from here on out. Uh, before we get out of here, uh, Caitlin, the real reason you haven't been on is you've been cooking. From the sick and twisted mind of Caitlin, yep. you've been cooking together a website. Yep. Please reveal to the audience what that website is right now. Yep. It's called chopupthesecarrots.com. And it's all about good carrots um, that I like to chop up. And you think, mm, orange carrots. But no, no, not orange carrots. You fuck carrots. with purple and white carrots? <laughs> Mike, there's more colors to carrots than even you know. Hey, what, Mike, yep. you yeah. fucking carrot racist. Why yeah. don't you sit your ass down and listen? Well, yeah. we all knew orange, but I was like, I've been eating some purple and whites. Yeah. But there's more. There's more. And that's where you find them on, on my website. The I'm website? Not, I'm not going to spoil it. I did, well, 
but you want to pitch the website a little. So I assume yeah. the website is like talks about uh, clarity and color yep. and flavor, of and then each it shows varietal. nice pictures. You can, sure, they download. I'm hoping really quickly. Do you go with or against the grain? I uh, yeah, exactly. All the carrot cooking advice. Yeah, and each you carrot s- gets 24 diamonds. Yep. Yes, and you get to see where the grains are in carrots. And uh, <laughs> because your fifth wedding anniversary is the carrot wedding anniversary, how yeah. much month's salary are you supposed to spend on carrots for your spouse? Uh, however much the Easter bunny brings you that year. I just don't get marriage, <laughs> and I never will. Th- uh, I you can't build this alone. Clearly, no, no. Uh, and what was the website? Carrots. Carrots.com. <laughs> I can't believe nobody's gotten that. Uh, I want. I want carrots. Wait, to be hold built on. By experts. Yeah. But aren't you? Wouldn't you be like not that surprised if you looked up carrots.com and there was nothing there? Like, do you really think Big <laughs> yeah, Carrot yeah. is like really trying to get that website? Big Carrot BC. Uh, go to my friends at cybersprout.net. Uh-huh. They're all about. Uh, Speed optimization, yep. maintenance. They're wow. designed uh, for collaboration on WordPress. Do you want them to do all the work? They will. Do you want to do the work they do but poorly? They'll let you do that and then fix it up on the back end. Uh, nice. Security, they'll, they're lovely people. Go to cybersprout.net. They are your partners for Digital World. Ryan? Do you want to uh, fall from great heights? Yes. Uh, from a fire-breathing monster? Uh-huh. They do drag and drop. Whoa! Whoa! I'm glad the new year hasn't changed you. How could it? <laughs> what if people are sick of carrots.com and how, yeah. how could they could be in cybersprout.net? Ryan, what are other websites people should go to? Oh man, I would go to popfilter.co. Mm-hmm. Um where you have every single thing that we have ever done including our podcasts, our articles, our farticles, which are articles about farts and poop particles. Ooh. Caitlin wrote most of those. Yeah. Yep. She has some thoughts. <laughs> that will Shock you. <laughs> uh, popfilter.co slash Amazon is should be your new Amazon bookmark if you are buying for the upcoming holidays, Woo! such as Arbor Day. Ooh, Groundhog Day. King Day. Groundhog Day. Martin Luther King Day. What are you guys going to get me for MLKJR Day? Ooh. I'm I hope it's listening. You. Ooh, it's uh, We're quality. Listening? And carrots from carrots.com. And carrots from Thank carrots. carrots. Because he loved carrots. We all knew that. Uh, those are all the websites. Uh, quiz. Pop quiz. You haven't thought about any of this in months. Mm. Caitlin. Yep. Social media. Your pop filter at, on Instagram. Yeah. And Blueski. Yeah, we're sort of on Blueski. Yeah, Blueski. Find us on there. because dying. Because no one knows how to find anything but look up pop filter. Uh, are there other shows people should check out? Yeah. yeah. Movie of the year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you better watch movie. Listen to movie of the year. It's good. You it's, better watch it's out. A good podcast. You better not cry because this show's great. <laughs> we are wrapping up 1973 as we speak. I believe the last episode will drop in a couple days, uh, and then it is all about 2023, the Woo. year we loved, the year we lost. Next week we will be back with what if episodes 202 and 203, and. I'm actually excited because I'm in an abusive relationship. I'm so pumped because Echo is here, guys, and we're going to start watching Echo. Yay! Marvel won't let me down again, will they? Never. For Ryan, I'm Kaylee. For Kaylee, I'm Ryan. Enough said. <laughs>